Hello, everybody. Uh, I just want to greet you in the name of the Lord and um, say that during this time when we're not able to meet together uh, in our church building, I thought I'd take advantage of uh, this recording to speak to you in a different way. And uh, it's a privilege to call you friends. It's a privilege for me to call you family. I want to share with you a, a mask today that I purchased when I was in Venice uh, 10 years or so ago. Um, it's one that the physicians wore. This nose they would stuff with uh, hay and uh, in order to help protect them from the bad air that they were breathing. Uh, they covered their heads, their necks, everything as much as possible. And uh, uh, this is what your physician looked like when he came to talk to you, to have his consult with you. During this time... Um, I couldn't help to think that it's it's not a new thing for health workers to uh, put themselves in harm's way and risk, and uh, I just man I just appreciate everybody who's doing that today and 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 uh, it's really a nice gift to our community, and uh, it, it reminded me we have some people in our fellowship and that we know that are working in the health field. And I just want to say a prayer for them real quick uh, before we go any farther. Lord Jesus, we just ask special grace for Polly Howe, Annie Kaufman, and Cynthia Applebaum during this important critical season. I just pray that they'll have a, a special ability to help those that they serve. Pray that you'd give them strength and compassion. And Lord, we wouldn't limit our prayers to them. We just want to pray for everybody who is ministering, who is serving in this way, who is helping us in this way, that they'd have special grace during this time. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, we have a theme verse that we kind of introduced during our last meeting at uh, Open Door at the, at the church, and um, it's Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. We also made it the first devotional that we did in our email devotionals that we're sending out. Uh, if you haven't taken advantage of those yet, I just I do one every day and mail it out. I in, invite you to um, to to enjoy it, to uh, let God talk to you through it, and uh, pass it on. Let's get it get out and beyond our our borders, if you will. Anyway, Ephesians five fifteen to seventeen says, "Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise." making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. You know, I just we, we've kind of addressed this verse, and uh, I just want to go right to the end and uh, talk about how important it is that we begin to understand what the will of God is during this time. We don't want to be going our way. We don't want to be like sheep running off and getting into trouble. We want to be listening to God, and God has things to say to us. I hope we all understand that um, and to help us, to, to our benefit. It adds value to our life. It adds protection. Uh, so I would just say, you know, it's been a relatively short time that we've been having to self-quarantine, to confine ourselves and not uh, be socially engaged with everybody. Uh, and, you know, I bet for a lot of us, this feels like it's been a lot longer than it really has. Um, but I, I think that the Apostle Paul would say that living wisely, as it speaks about in this verse we just looked at, uh, is an expression uh, of love to each other as we uh, seek to curtail the spread of the virus. Uh, I, I do acknowledge, however, that we are social beings and that, uh, in fact, some of us even call ourselves huggers, you know, because we like that contact and we like to give that comfort to each other. And uh, so this distance, this separation from each other can be pretty difficult. So I have a few words for you. First of all, that while you're, natural mind wants to conclude that, hey, I am just over all this. I, I've done as much as I can and that's it. I would share with you that God has called us overcomers, that we are, are not um, 
losers. We can win here. We can we can do the right thing. Um, and actually, I, I just think you can come out of this better than you went into it. I think that there are uh, things that we can learn, that uh, there are things that God will teach us and expand our capabilities, and uh, he'll give us creative ideas. And um, But having said that, I, I do acknowledge that to be an overcomer, you have to have a challenge, you have to have a problem. And our problem is that um, we're kind of alone here in our homes, you know, for long periods of time and uh, only so much TV will work, you know. And uh, so I, I just want to pray for a moment for especially the single gals uh, in our fellowship during this time. Father, we just lift up each of uh, the individuals, men and women, who are, are living alone during this time. We ask for special grace. We ask that uh, you would give them a faith-filled mind that visualizes the future as something that can, in the present, uh, that the challenges that are ours can be overcome, that we, we believe that you only lead us in triumph, that uh, we can all, do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, help us to uh, put on those promises each day as our protection. In Jesus' name, amen. The other idea is that God wants us to understand what his will is during this time. And um, <clears throat> it's nice that he tells us what his will is, that it's not some vague thing that we have to go chasing around. In fact, in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, God says, In everything give thanks. That is what God wants you to do because of Christ Jesus. And so um, this is a season of gratitude, if you will. God has declared uh, that we are to be thankful. And to be honest, our natural minds can find this makes us a little cranky, uh, a little irritable, a little grouchy, a little touchy, if you will. But uh, I just want to tell you that the blessings of God did not cease just because our lives have become more confined. I will say that they have to be spiritually discerned. In other words, we need help with this, guys. And um, so I encourage you to go before the Lord today and say, what can I be thankful for? Give me some ideas. Perhaps you'd like to start a little journal, a little where you briefly write each day the things that you're thankful for, the, the ways that God is caring for you and showing you his love and, and how you're getting through this time. And uh, I just think that would be an awesome thing to do. Finally, I leave you this, with this thought. Jesus says, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. God bless you guys this week.